God chose Moses and gave the law to Moses to communicate to the Israelites. Moses asked the Israelites to obey the commandments of God so that the Gentiles might know their God. Joshua was Moses' successor. After Moses died, Joshua began to lead the Israelites to enter Canaan. The Jordan River was parted for the people of Israel, and the priests carried the Ark of the Covenant, leading the people to cross the river into the Promised Land. Joshua called upon the people to believe in the Torah and follow the Ten Commandments that God made with Moses in Mount Sinai. After the Israelites entered the Promised Land, the hostile Canaanites did not want them to live there and wanted to drive them away, and the Israelites had to prepare for battle. At that time, Joshua met a mysterious warrior, an angel of God. Joshua asked him, Are you helping the Israelites or the Canaanites? The angel replied, Neither. The hidden message of this statement is that God is on the side of justice, punishing those who don't follow the commandments. It seems to be a conquest between the Israelites and the Canaanites, but in reality it is a conquest by God, and those who follow the commandments are the supporters and executors of God's plan. God will destroy those who don't follow the commandments, whether they are Israelites or Canaanites. Of course, during the battle, some righteous people died for God, and they will return to heaven. At the battle of Jericho, the Israelites, with sincere faith in God, carried the Ark of the Covenant and blew the trumpets for six days circling around the city, showing that God was in charge and that they were obeying him. However, the people of Jericho did not turn to the God of Israel. On the seventh day, the priests blew their trumpets, the walls miraculously fell, and the Israelites won without fighting. This story shows that God will save the people who obey the commandments. They just need to trust and wait. Then, at the Battle of Ai, an Israelite named Achan stole something from Jericho that belonged to God and lied. What he said and did were foolish and against the commandments. As a result, the Israelites were defeated at the Battle of Ai. When they humbly confessed their sins, repented, and seriously dealt with the sins committed by Achan, they won again. This is a lesson from negative experience. These two battles are in stark contrast, and these two stories are told together to illustrate an important point. If the Israelites want to inherit the Promised Land, they must obey and trust in God's commandments. In this regard, they won't have any privilege. God is merciful and loves humanity. God wanted to destroy the Canaanites because they worshipped false gods and were extremely morally corrupt, especially in regard to sex. Moreover, the sacrifice of children was common and also sexual rituals. However, the Canaanites of Gibeon turned to follow the God of Israel and made a covenant of peace with Israel, which is in contrast to the behaviour of the other Canaanite kings, who united in an alliance to destroy Israel, but in the end Israel won a great victory. A few Canaanites who turned to the God of Israel, were able to survive. God was open to accepting these Canaanites who had converted. For those Canaanites who would not convert, God commanded the Israelites not to intermarry or do business with them. These stories mark a unique period in Israel's history. These battles were limited to the minority groups that inhabited the land of Canaan, 
while for the other nations, God commanded Israel to live in peace with them. These battle stories are in no way to tell the readers to commit violence in the name of God. Rather, it shows the righteous judgment of God against the sins of humanity in this unique period in history and how he saved all those who kept the commandments, not just the Israelites, from being exterminated by the Canaanites who worshipped false gods. After years of warfare, Joshua, in his old age, began to divide the land among the twelve tribes of Israel. This was exactly the fulfilment of God's ancient promise to Abraham that his descendants would inherit the land. Now, this was gradually becoming reality. The last part of the book of Joshua records Joshua's two farewell speeches to the people, which are very similar to Moses' final teachings to the people in the book of Deuteronomy. Joshua reminded them to remember God's generosity and memorize how God led them into the land of Canaan and saved them from the Canaanites. He asked his people to leave the Canaanite gods and be faithful to their covenant with God. If they were faithful in keeping the covenant, they would be given life and blessings in this land. On the contrary, they would face God's judgment similar to what the Canaanites experienced, and be expelled into exile. Subsequent history also proved that when the Jews were unfaithful to their covenant with God, they would be expelled into exile. In the 20th century, after a small number of Jews had repented, God chose them again and their country was restored. 